Last Monday Mystery, we talked about Hallie Illingsworth, who would become known as the Lady of the Lake. Of course, this lake being Lake Crescent in Olympic National Park. And today we're going to be talking about two more people that supposedly went missing in Crescent Lake in Olympic National Park. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, we would not be able to do what we do. A very special thank you to each of you. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce. And today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about Russell and Blanche Warren. Now, for a lot of people who are interested in missing people, the story of the Warrens probably is not that exciting. After all, many people believe that this case has been closed. And, and it might have been closed, but I have a lot of suspicions, especially since a couple episodes back, we spoke about Ted Gunnarsson, who believed that Olympic National Park was a dump site, not only for bodies, but for bodies that had been used ritually. We also know that the UN has taken very special interest in Olympic National Park. And if you're like me, anything the UN takes interest in immediately sets off red flags. And even though there has been some evidence found to support the fact that the Warrens lost their lives by drowning in Lake Crescent, there still are no bodies, no remains that I'm aware of. And maybe that's because the bodies decomposed. But for me, there is something very suspicious about the fact that they can't find any remains of these two people. Russell and Blanche Warren were a married couple with two sons when they went missing. They lived at a logging camp on Bogachill River. Now, I did some digging into logging camps. And please excuse me if I'm wrong about this, but it doesn't seem like this is something we really have today. A logging camp, especially back in the early 1900s, was a place where people who were lumberjacks would temporarily live for work. And so I'm assuming that since they lived at a logging camp, that that meant that Russell Warren was in the lumberjack business. These were transitory camps, meaning that the families that lived there, from what I understand, weren't permanent residents of the area. Now, any type of transitory work can cause interesting, mysterious cases. Think about truck stops, all that kind of stuff, again, because people aren't always there. And especially since this case happened in the 1920s, we know that perhaps record keeping was not as thorough as maybe it is today. Now, interesting, this area where they lived was just west of Forks, Washington. Now, Forks, Washington got famous with the Twilight series. Yes, the series about the teenage vampires. Yes, I did read the first book, but frankly, and in my opinion, the writing wasn't that great. So I stopped reading these books. But Forks, Washington was where these vampires lived. And if you know the weather of the state of Washington and you kind of know a thing or two about vampires, you know that this is the terrain and the environment that vampires, especially those we hear about in stories, would really like to live. It's dark, it's gray. And with all those wooded mountains, it's probably a pretty good place to hide. Now, if you're like me, if you've been on this journey of awakening for a long time, you always want to take a second look at things. And I kind of believe that there's something to this area of Forks, Washington. We know there's something to Olympic National Park. We know that this is a huge place for rituals, we'll say. Again, as I said, since the UN is involved, hello, red flag there. But we also know that this group of people have to tell you things in order to get your consent. And so... Has Forks, Washington always been kind of a hotspot for paranormal, somewhat psychedelic things like vampires? And now I think most of us know that vampires absolutely do exist. Maybe not in the form we thought they did, but they do exist. But anyway, 
Russell and Blanche Warren lived west of Forks, Washington in this logging camp. And on July 3rd of 1929, the couple left in their 1927 Chevrolet to go into town to buy a new washing machine. The couple had planned to be back by July 4th so that they could celebrate America's Independence Day with their two sons who were 12 and 14 years old at the time. Now, for many of you, you might think it'd be kind of strange to leave a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old alone overnight. But again, this was 1929. And I can imagine that 14 especially was probably given a lot more responsibility than 14-year-olds today. Well, the problem was Russell and Blanche Warren never came home. Now, as many people say, this ended up being very troublesome for their two sons. There were rumors going around that they had literally just abandoned their sons. However, there was a trace of their car or them, period, after their last known sighting of buying a washing machine. For many years, people speculated that the Warrens had driven off into Lake Crescent and drowned. And after this story remained a mystery for 72 years, on April 3rd of 2002, Volunteer divers, along with the National Park Service, spotted a car 166 feet below the surface of Lake Crescent in Olympia National Park. They believed it was the remains of the 1927 Chevrolet owned by Russell and Blanche Warren. And for all intent and purposes, the car that they found did look like the car that had belonged to the Warrens. The car was about 60 feet feet from the shoreline near Ambulance Point on Route 101. In 1929, the road that the Warrens were driving on or would have been driving on was a one-way road. And in 1929, there were no guardrails. So many people believe that what must have happened is that Russell Warren missed the curve and tail spun into the lake, thus ending their lives. At this point, this area of the lake does have a guardrail and the road has been elevated because I'm assuming this road was probably a problem for a lot of people. However, this is where things get very confusing for me. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to automobiles, and I certainly have never been in a car as a car has been submerged in water. But you see, when I was a kid in the 1980s and 90s, the cars we drove didn't even have seatbelts in the back seat. That only came around later. And in fact, when I was a kid, it wasn't even law to wear a seatbelt, especially if you were in the back seat. So I know for certain that in 1929, those cars did not have seatbelts. And I would imagine that if your car is goes into the lake, the first thing you're going to try to do is get out of the car. I don't think the car would have sunk that fast. And so I'm slightly confused as to why the Warrens didn't get out of the car. It just seems to me that it would have been possible Looking at the car as I see it now, now, then again, especially um, Blanche had definitely different clothing on than we wear now. And I'm sure that, that those heavy dresses would have been quite cumbersome and weighty in submerged in water. And I'm sure the water was, was really cold. So I'm sure that that had a lot to do with it, too. However, when the divers found the car, the 1927 Chevrolet back in 2002, they found no remains of bodies. No skulls, no femur bones, no jewelry laying around, nothing. And this is odd to me because I know even with the Titanic, they're finding remains of people. So how come there are no remains of Russell and Blanche Warren? This is strange to me. Now, I could just be overthinking it. As I said on the last episode with the Lady of the Lake, Crescent Lake has this curse or this rumor around it that it won't give up its dead, that anybody who disappears in Lake Crescent is not coming back, except for, of course, Hallie Illingsworth, who did come back up. And a lot of people, when they cover the Hallie Illingsworth case, they'll add the Blanche and Russell Warren case onto the Hallie Illingsworth case, just saying, hey, look, these other two people, you know, drowned in the lake as well. But yet again, with Hallie, there was a body. With this, there are no bodies. And seeing what we know about the area now, is it too far off to speculate that something else happened to the Warrens? And maybe the car was pushed into the lake as evidence of, of something that didn't actually happen? Now, beyond that, there's really not a whole lot of information. Again, this was the 1920s. But I am curious, what do you guys think? 
do you think that the bodies just moved out of the car and are somewhere along the bottom of the lake there? Or do you think the bodies were never in the lake to begin with? Do you think something else happened to Russell and Blanche Warren? All right, guys, I know this is a fast one today, a quick mystery for you guys today. Again, there's not a whole lot of information out there about the Warrens. I will say, though, that this is odd. So somebody may, did make a documentary about this case, and um, I went to go watch the documentary. I searched high and low for this documentary, and there is a way for me to watch it, but I have to apply to watch it, to buy it, to watch it. I believe it's called The Warrens, A Lake Crescent Mystery. And the trailer is out there. If I can find the trailer, I'll put the trailer down in the description box below. But yeah, I have to like apply to watch it and be, you know, verified and then pay for it just to be able to watch this documentary, which I find to be very strange as well. All right, guys, once again, please leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Tomorrow, we will be back with part 5B of the Magdalene series. And once again, I'm so thankful to all of you guys and grateful to all of you guys for being a part of that series with me. That is truly turning into one of my favorite series. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.